My name is Jasmine Harmon, and I know firsthand how devastating a compulsive disorder can be. All through my life, I felt like my mum's stuff was more important than me. It was purely a compulsion that she couldn't control. I've helped mum and people all over the country deal with their obsessive behaviour. Get rid. I'm really mm -hmm. proud of you. Now I've become interested in another secretive condition. So you actually keep your living room locked? Compulsive shopping. I don't know why, but I can't stop myself. We all shop, of course. Market! I want it! Yay! But some of us shop much more than others. I think I've spent about £9,000 just on shoes. I will be out, and then all of a sudden I see a bargain. I forget really how much I'm spending. He just continues to just buy and buy and buy things that we don't really need. I explore what happens when shopping spirals out of control. It's really taken on my life. I don't like shopping, but shopping likes me. I can't even trust myself. I discover the roots of the problem run deep. I haven't been in there since I put all the girls' clothes in. And the impact on shoppers and their families. They do feel pushed out, to be honest with you. Can be far greater than simply overspending. I don't want to have shopping taken away from me because that would be like my whole world come to an end. It's thought that as many as 8 million people in the UK have a compulsive buying disorder. Shopping is my life, like I live to shop. I'm not married yet and shopping is like my husband, like my companion. I've been told about 30-year-old Dipna, a self-confessed shopping addict. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Capable of spending thousands in a single transaction. I do feel as if it's out of my control. I might not want to buy, but I just buy it. She's filled a wall of wardrobes with designer jewellery, shoes, blazers and bags. This was 3,000, this was 1,600, and the wallet was about 700 pounds. I got credit cards. That's probably the worst thing that I could have done. Despite living at home, earning 500 pounds a week teaching and writing about cookery and co-managing her dad's restaurant, Dipna is struggling to fund her habit. I'm in about 7,500 pound debt. These earrings are like, 200 pounds each, 220, 250. When I can't go shopping, it depresses me. I've cancelled work just so that I can go shopping. I know that's not a good thing. I can't imagine there being absolutely no shopping. I don't know what I would do. What else would I do? If I didn't shop, what would I have to look forward to? Nothing. There'd be no life without shopping. I don't think I've ever met anybody before who sees shopping as their best friend or their life partner. You know, you can't have a relationship with shopping. It sounds silly, doesn't it, even to say it out loud. But Dipna really feels that that is the meaning to her life. The trouble is, she's getting into debt, she feels depressed if she can't go shopping. Hi. To me, that sounds like quite a serious problem. Dipna already has more clothes than she could possibly wear, but I see no signs of her slowing down. How much did you spend yesterday? Oh, £1,500. I didn't want to, but I tried not to think about it. That's quite a shopping spree. Yeah. Most of the things she buys are pushed to the back of her cupboards and still have their labels on. It's quite a lot there you haven't used. Yeah. But then when you go to the shop and you see it, and it's just that moment and you're just like, oh, that's really nice. Or oh, what the hell, just buy it. You're not in control. You're not, you're not really able to say, no, I'm not, bu I'm not buying it. No, I'm unable to do that. Who's in control? The little voice inside of me. <laughs> 600 pounds. You look like you don't like them. 
They're not my cup of tea, is the honest really? truth. But that doesn't matter because yeah. I'm not going to be wearing them. How £485. Much? <laughs> Yesterday, I said to Mum, right, that's it now. I'm going to start saving up because I'm going to buy a car. Have you already got a car? Yeah, but the car new. I've got is the old Mercedes. There's a new one coming out in a few months, a new shape. So, like, right. I've got my heart set on that. And it's really important to have the new shape. Yeah. But now I'll take it on lease. And then if I'm paying that off every month, I know I'll have that pressure. That might stop me from shopping so much. Cause I or just to... might get you in more debt. I mean, does that ever cross your mind, that you yeah, could stick with the old car and you could have the extra money every month to pay off your debt? But I wouldn't... You wouldn't? Why not? I'll probably just use that money to, like, either shop more or I would go and get the car. So the way you look at it is that that money, you might as well use it on a new yeah, car. Yeah, might as well use it on a new car before I use it. Because otherwise you're going to use it on shopping. shopping. Yeah. Which makes sense. No, it doesn't. I'm looking at all of this and it's actually mind-boggling to think how much money's worth of stuff you've got here. Yeah. It's got to be like hundreds of thousands yeah, of pounds yeah. worth of stuff. Yes, yeah, a lot of stuff. On first meeting Dipna, you could be forgiven for thinking she is spoiled. But actually, the honest truth, I think, is that she is not in control. I know from my work with hoarders that compulsive disorders govern the people that have them. And I think that Dipna could well be in that category. Not all shopping addicts get their fix from high-priced purchases. I'm on my way to meet a single mum, Ebony, whose eye for a bargain is out of control. Look, and they've still got their, their labels on them. I don't even remember half the wigs I've got, I have to say. Ebony lives in Surrey with her sons River and Chance. How come you got all that blonde in your hair? I dyed it, ginger. I think it looks pretty swag, if you ask me. Oh, please, baby. I'll let you Shut up. Their mum doesn't spend a lot of money, but boy, does she buy a lot of things. Whoa. <laughs> wow. How Thanks. many pairs of shoes do you think you've got? Um, possibly a thousand now. <gasps> a thousand pairs awesome. of shoes. But have um, you worn all of them? They will be worn. They will be worn. <laughs> I don't actually go out to buy shoes. I will be out and then all of a sudden I see a bargain. So are you saying that a thousand pairs of shoes happened by accident? Totally. None of these shoes were planned. Mm. Does it not worry you? I think it's been more than 20 pounds, if anything, in any of these shoes. I'm saving. OK, prime example. These boots down here, I got three pairs for a tenner. They were such a good bargain. I actually bought Nine pairs of shoes. <laughs> Nine pairs. I did. It was amazing. I can't even express how fantastic it felt that day. It's like an escape from your day's work or, you know. And financially, you're OK with buying all of that stuff? Yeah, because eventually I um, pay off the debt. So do you buy on so credit cards? I do. Yeah. How much debt have you got? I've got about six grand. OK. But <laughs> if I paid the full price, out of thousand pounds. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. It would be, but it's already ridiculous. As I said, I don't plan to go out shopping, but I don't like shopping, but shopping likes me. I that see. <laughs> it says, come to me, come to me. Secret storage compartment. <laughs> you are kidding me. Are you actually joking? <laughs> like, how do you find anything? ta -da! Just a couple of scarves and hats. <laughs> it obviously makes you feel good having all these things to, to hug in your bed. 
Oh, there you go. There's a missing void. Yeah? They're replacing my man. <laughs> I don't have one. And I'm sure this will give me more joy. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm honest, I find Ebony a bit frustrating. It's hard to know when she's being serious or not. She doesn't see herself as a shopping addict because she doesn't even like shopping. Shopping likes her. Ebony hides the problem from herself by cramming bargains into every nook and cranny, including a locked room I'm not yet allowed to look in. At least Ebony stops buying when the shop's shut. Behind closed doors all over Britain, some compulsive shoppers feed their habits around the clock online. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I think about is what I'm bidding on that day. 56-year-old Dean is addicted to online auctions, spending more time with his computer than with his wife, Karen. It's almost a full-time job for Dean. It could be eight hours a day. Because if something finishes at four in the morning, he would stay up till four in the morning. In one day, I would buy probably 20 items, maybe more. Oh, God, there's another two cameras in here. It could be a new television. Uh, it could be a car. There's another camera here. Oh, another camera. Candy floss makers, sunglasses, watches. I forgot my head, those, Karen. Did you? 30, 40 coats. That one. That's brand new, that one. And does he wear them? He does. No, not really. Some of these clothes are quite expensive. Um, goodness knows how much money I've spent on them. I wouldn't like to count up, really. <gasps> All with tags on. All brand Never new. even been worn. Not even been worn there. I'd like to buy guitars, equipment, Hawaiian shirts, uh, a caravan. In fact, he did bid on the boat, but fortunately we didn't win that because we've nowhere to put it. I mean, he did have five cars at one time. You bought that safe? Oh, I bought that. But you yeah. didn't realise that this was a toy? No. I thought I was buying a metal big safe for a good price. He's not got a clue, have you, love? When I bid, I really get excited. It's the thrill of the win, I think. It's, it's like gambling in a way, I suppose. And if somebody was to outbid him by know, five, ten pounds, he'd be beside himself. We could have bought a small house by now. Yeah. Wouldn't we? It's quite embarrassing, really. I feel embarrassed about it. Dean and Karen have been married for less than two years. Karen's under no illusion as to where she comes in relation to shopping. He spends an awful lot more time now than ever. And I do feel a little bit pushed out, to be honest with you, as if uh, he gets more attention than I do. So, yeah, it has got out of control. I would prefer to shop than go to the pictures or go to an event. It's taken over my life. It's really taken over my life. And I just think about it all the time. Dean squirrels away a lot of his buying in different storage locations across Yorkshire. But still, their home has become unbearable for wife Karen, prompting a drastic move to a bigger property in the same village. As you can see, as we've just moved, and yeah. these are all the boxes. <laughs> I've come to find out more. Well, it's got to the stage where we couldn't have anybody over to stay even no. the grandchildren, because we couldn't get to the bed. All, all the things I bought was on top of the bed. We'd nowhere else to put them. We had to move, really. What, so. you couldn't just sort of maybe get rid of some of no. the stuff? <laughs> the postman has, like, a satchel, doesn't he? Yeah. Then he went to a little trolley, and then it got that bad, he had a little van. He has to come with the van now and he's bringing parcels. all my parcels. <laughs> your solution is to keep putting things in storage and keep buying a bigger Trying, house yes. and moving to a bigger house yeah. and a bigger house. <laughs> Dean's already filled every cupboard in their new house. His purchases are spilling into the spare room. You've just got a few here. And, <gasps> and these are just all brand new, unused, never come out of the plastic. Yeah, oh. never even took them out of the, some children's watches. We've got an awful there. lot of sunglasses as well. Yeah. I'm sure we've got a suitcase full of sunglasses. A suitcase full of sunglasses? I would imagine it's that one, I think. Dean 
when you're buying a watch online, what's going through your mind? It's just a case of buying them. And do you have plans for them? To put them in this box. <laughs> what happens is that you'll get things on eBay, so you'll leave it on your desk for a while, so I'll put it in one of the boxes, yeah. and then he'll forget and all about, forget it. about it. And that's how it starts to start. I see. So for you, the, the excitement is actually that moment of purchase. Yes. yes. Sometimes I see him bidding on something, and I think, oh, God, that's just going to go in the spare room. What's inside this house is the tip of the iceberg because he's got storage full of cheap, tacky, plastic junk, for want of a better word. Ooh, sunglasses. Uh, oh, I'd forgotten all about those. The Dean doesn't care about, he doesn't even know what's in those boxes. And so it seems really pointless, but still he can't stop. Dean spends eight hours a day glued to online auctions, but I'm not sure he really knows how much money, as well as time, he's wasting. So, show me some of the type of things that you're looking at online at the moment. All right, at the moment, I've just bid on this one and I've won this for the kitchen. There it is, we can look at the pictures now, I think. £51. Which I think I've got a bargain there. And so how do you feel having just won that? Fantastic. It's like scoring a goal at football, I suppose. It's, it's, it's that thing that you get, you know, that elation of, uh, of winning the bid. How much do you reckon you spend, like, each week or...? It goes in... Uh, I'm not sure, cos I don't really... But the fact that you have absolutely no idea about how much you've spent, not, not worrying to you at all? Um, I have an overdraft at the bank, so... <laughs> Dean's oblivion to his spending is staggering. Hopefully, Karen can shed some real light on his finances. Do you know if Dean's in debt? Yes, he is, definitely. Do you know how much? Yes. Are you willing to share? I think it's 15,000. Really? Mm-hmm. Right. So that makes this situation a lot more serious. It does. I really do worry that if Dean carries on the way he's been going, he is going to do irreparable damage to not only his finances, but also to his relationship, because it must be so hard for Karen to just have to put up with it on a daily basis when it's completely unnecessary. I really want to help all three of the compulsive shoppers I've met. So I've come to one of the few medical institutions in the UK that identifies the damage shopping addiction can cause. I'm hoping to find some answers from lead consultant for addiction, Dr Niall Campbell. I have seen lots of patients who have significant shopping problems and it's not recognised by the medical profession as a serious symptom. Um, the, the, the harm that's done and the consequences are enormous, particularly the financial consequences, and then the amount of time that they spend doing it instead of being with their family, interacting with other people, being with friends. I think it's a huge issue, and uh, we've got our head in the sand about it. With the people I've met, a lot of them don't really see their shopping as a problem. Sometimes even defining themselves by it, that's just what I do. And there seems to be an element of denial is that quite common? It's massive. The key is recognition, like any other addiction, that there's something wrong. And if people actually acknowledge the fact, then they can reach a, uh, some sort of solution. Could you liken compulsive shopping to drug addiction or alcoholism or gambling? We see a lot of similarities with those kind of addictions. When people shop and buy things, they can get a little bit of a rush. Mm. And that's probably a bit of a dopamine rush, like um, one that people get when they score drugs or when they put a bet on. And people will say, well, yeah, I feel a bit better, I brought it home. But then there's a big downward surge when they, they feel guilty about it. So it's a, you know, it's a, um, there's a negative aspect mm. to it, which is why we often think of it as an addictive thing. 
Are there any practical steps or exercises that someone who's addicted to shopping could use? Well, compulsive shopping we see as a symptom of many conditions. So the therapy is aimed at what unhappiness from the past, what unhappiness currently about relationships or your situation, then trying to change that. It's about what's behind it. So this is where the rest of your stuff's hidden, yes. is it? This is our storage space. I don't have enough room downstairs. My future husband better have a big house, that's all I'm saying. So where did your love of shopping begin? I think I blame my mum and dad. Cause Why? Because as, as a child, they spoilt me. Whenever I used to go out with mum, she always used to buy us something. And when dad was with us, he always used to take, in the sh take us in the shop and say, right, guys, get what you want. Would you say that you're addicted to shopping? Yeah, for sure. What makes it an addiction? The fact that I can't stop. And I think if I did ever stop, or well, someone did try and stop me, I, I don't think I would be Dipna and I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't. So you would lose your identity? Yeah, I think I would. Because there's a lot more to you, Dipna, than just shopping. There is, there I is. think. Me as a person, I love children. And I think if I, ha if I ever had kids, which I will, I'm sure, in the future, um, I think that will make me, you know, forget shopping because my love of kids is even more extreme than my shopping, so, yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel kind of sad. Aww. I think she's lonely. And I think the shopping is almost a replacement for having someone in her life to love and to cherish. And so instead, she loves and cherishes all these other material things. I've decided to pay Dipna's father, Gulu, a visit at his restaurant to see what he thinks of his daughter's shopping and her views about what might have started it. She told me a bit about her upbringing and that she pretty much had everything that she wanted. And do you think that has made her worse? Uh, I would say I am to blame a little when we got married. You know, we were longing for a child. I'd been uh, going to temples, to shrines. We waited nearly six, six years, and our prayers were answered. That was the proudest moment, and uh, I wanted to get her anything, she said. She was like a little princess. Mm. She still is. <laughs> How does it then make you feel that Dipna says shopping is her partner, and shopping is the biggest thing in her life? I think that is not a very serious problem. Drinking is a serious problem, or drugs is a serious problem than shopping. But if Dipna is addicted to shopping, hmm. could that not be just as dangerous or as harmful and as limiting to her life as drinking or taking drugs? No, I don't think so. She's a free person. That's how I can put her. But is she, Guru, because Dipna has said to me that she would love to have children and that she thinks if she had children, she wouldn't need to be shopping so much because she would have something else to fill her time. But by spending so much of her time and her energies and her efforts and her money, of course, shopping, is she preventing herself from getting to that point? She's taking her time to getting the right person. And of course, I think once she gets married, she will then realize how she's got to maintain her lifestyle. Things will change. I think in a, in a way, what she's doing is how she is. Okay. So I cannot change too much of that. Talking to Dipna's dad, so many little things kind of fall into place. But I don't think he really got the fact that the shopping could be getting in the way of Dipna living her life and moving forward with her future. It feels to me that because shopping is universal, something we all do, it's all too easy for compulsive shoppers and their families to bury their heads in the sand. 
going to see Ebony today and I'd like to get to the bottom of what is going on because it's all fun, it's all a game, but I think that's a veneer. I'm hoping she'll let me see what she stores in her secret room and open up enough for me to understand why she's filling her house with so much stuff. Hi, Hi. Hi. Uh, how are you? Oh, I've actually got some really good bargains, actually. Yeah, definitely. What kind of things? Electric blankets. Electric blankets? How many did you get? Uh, five. And a few other little bits and pieces. Oh, go on, tell me, what else? I've got two jackets. Three clocks and a pair of shoes. But my foot was hurting me, so I had to go and buy a pair. I got this really nice bra knicker set. A, a CD. <laughs> three of those donuts, three croissants. Oh, and now I see why. So you've got three packets of each? Yeah. So they were reduced? Absolutely. I only went out for tortillas and some mayonnaise. <laughs> what happens then? You go out to buy tortilla you come back with so much other stuff. I don't know. I didn't even want to stop. But if I don't spoil myself, no one's going to spoil me, so I might as well do it. So when you buy things for yourself, what are you doing there? Oh, what am I doing? I'm making myself feel happy for a little while. Why don't you show me where you're keeping your stuff? You seem like you really don't want to go. I really don't want to go into this room because it's a complete mess. I really don't want to go. So you actually keep your living room locked? Yeah. <laughs> OK. OK. So you store quite a lot of stuff in here? No, no, I'm supposed to be decorating. I'll try and find someone to help me decorate. And, um, You're planning to decorate? Well, I bought three sets of wallpaper. I'm not quite sure which one to put where. <laughs> You've all just bought three sets of wallpaper yeah, without but... knowing where they're going to go? Yeah, but there was only £2.50 each. Okay. I just wonder if sometimes you get swept up with an idea and you buy all the stuff to go with it, like the wallpaper and the paint because it's on a discount, and then whatever it is you're planning to do with it doesn't materialise. This is the wrong way around. I see the bargains, I'll buy the bargains. When I bring them here, I think, what can I do with it? And then I do something with it. Right. The other way around. So it's completely it's... driven by the, you seeing a bargain. Yeah. And you think, I've, I've bought it now, I've got to make use of it. Yeah. What about all this lot? And some of my tools. Underneath. They're just as good as shoes. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, oh, this is new. Do -do -do. What is it? It's an angle grinder. Do you have much use for an angle grinder? Yep, I will be. Be using it very soon. I yes. see more toolboxes, more... Yeah, more tools. It's just dawning on me the size of what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis when you're going out and you're tempted to buy something. It's not just one type of thing. No. Look, it's another toolbox down there. And does it matter if you use them or not? Or if you need them or not? I always use tools, eventually. It's a really sad situation, actually. I was totally not prepared for that. I thought she's a girl who likes shoes, she likes jackets, she likes clothes. Straightforward. But she's got these projects that are on the go, but they're not really ever getting started. What's in there, then? Um, some more tools. And now, seeing everything makes me realise this is much bigger than I realised in the beginning. And definitely a much bigger issue than she realises herself at the moment. In Yorkshire, it's Dean's favourite time of the day. I have quite a lot coming today and it's a um, big excitement. It's a little buzz that I get that, that every morning I'm here and I'm waiting for him, so uh, I never know what's coming. Karen sees things differently. I'm just thinking, oh my God, how much? What is it? Do we need it? 
upsets me really because it's a waste of money. That's money that we could be doing something constructive with. Hi there. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten today. It's like Christmas. <laughs> It really worries me, to be honest with you. On a daily basis, I'm trying to find where to put things. It's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> I can't get into this one. What's this blue, eh? Oh, wow. But I want to see what else I've got as well, so you can take that. Are you bored with this one now? Just a little bit, but we'll see what's in this one now. So I'll put that over there. It's the bidding and the winning and then opening the, pre the parcels. Well, they're like presents to him, I think. I think that's probably how he looks at them. Um, but it is, it's just that thrill. The Hawaiian shirts is something that I do buy and I do collect them. It's like my watches and my guitars and things. That is actually essential, that, because everything has to match. I don't think that'll even fit Dean. That's out of Dean's mind now, today's purchases. He's on tomorrow's. It's gone up. I've still been outbid. So I'm going to go up to £15.9p now. Just continues to just buy and buy and buy. And I'd say 75% of the items that we receive are things that we don't really need, want or require. I'm the high bidder. I'm winning the bid. Yay! Dean's on his fourth marriage. I really want him to spend more time with Karen and rediscover the world outside of online auctions. I'm asking him to try something he's never done before, go cold turkey. Delete eBay. OK. Gone. Go there you go. I feel like I've lost my hand. I bet you're surprised, aren't you? I'm that really I've done surprised that. Yeah. that you've actually done it. I bet you are, yeah. Think of all the time that you're going to have to yourself now. I know, now. well, I will want to. And time, more time for you as well. Oh, that'd be nice. Dean's agreed to try and stay off the auction site for three weeks. I think the hardest part of uh, not going online is um, I do it, it's just automatic for me. We could be sat watching TV, but I'm always on there looking and what's happening. But that's going to be the hardest part, not, not having it there at the side of me. Dean will be starving himself of a habit he's fed eight hours a day, day in and day out, for years. But it's like a little break, this, isn't it? It's like just getting out. Well, we need to make more time to do something like this because for a cup of coffee and a sandwich, yeah. there's nowhere near as much as you spend, spend on the on... internet. Yeah. To help Dean, I've suggested he uses some of the time freed up from shopping to get rid of the stuff he's stored in friends' garages and warehouses all over Yorkshire by selling it at a car boot. I actually bought this from eBay to try and learn the keyboards. It had all the things on there, all the different notes. I think I bought at the time on a whim, really, just to... I think I've played it once. A lot of it's just a load of rubbish, really, isn't it? By facing up to the things he's buried in boxes, I hope to open Dean's eyes to what's truly important. Well, these, br these bring back some memories now, look. Amongst piles of discarded purchases, Dean stores memorabilia from his past life as an 80s pop star. That's me with black lace there. They just mean so much when you look back on your life, what you've achieved and done and... So I'm upset that they've just been put into a box and closed up and put away in storage. And the other things are immaterial, really. They're not, you know, they mean nothing. But when you open that up and, and find what used to be, I brought a tear to my eye. That did. I know you shouldn't always live on your past, but it is. It's just lovely memories of of, uh, of my life. As Dean's pop stardom waned, online shopping filled the gap. It's seductive stuff, and easy to see how without it, his life feels empty. Another day, this is getting harder and harder not to go on. To be honest, I had a sneaky look on yesterday, but uh, I did manage not to 
to buy anything. In West London, I want to see if Dipner might be up for a similar challenge. Not just to stop shopping, but to think about why she shops and how else she might spend her time. Say three weeks? Three weeks. Yeah, because I think that would be enough time to, you know, it would be a challenge, but it would be enough time to see how it affects you. Three weeks is a very long time. I saw, um, three weeks is a long... No, that's... Like, that's unrealistic. Two weeks, I could still... Two weeks, you think you can do? Yeah. And how will you go about avoiding the temptation to shop? I'd have to find something to do. Yes, exactly. That is exactly what you'll have to do. Go on a couple of dates. Mm, it doesn't sound as exciting as shopping, but yeah, we could always <laughs> shop. <laughs> Dipna may be laughing now, but as I leave her to it, I know it's not going to be easy. Today, my first proper day, I really need to buy something. And it's getting me down. It's, I don't know, making me a bit depressed, I guess. Right now, it just feels like I haven't been shopping for ages. And it's actually starting to piss me off. It's making me pretty grumpy. Twenty miles away in Weybridge, I've suggested a slightly different strategy for Ebony. From kitchen blenders to garden tools, Ebony gets her bars from bargains. Going out for one thing and returning with multiples of anything on offer. I bought three of these teddy bears and I bought four of these little mini ones. But she's cluttering up her house and her life with stuff she doesn't need and can barely afford. So I've asked her to write a shopping list and stick to it. OK, everything that I need from one shop, I do it and I have to visualise the shops. So, uh, dog food. But despite best intentions... Right, just one second. <laughs> ..it seems she soon falls back into old ways. Let me show you what I bought. £9 tea. And what did Ebony find it for? Do do 50p. And yes, I did buy more than one. Do 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 50p. I'm sorry, but there's just no way I am going to walk past them. When I caught up with Ebony two weeks later, I quickly realised she'd fallen off the wagon big time. That's new. Really? Yeah. 40 inch flat screen TVs and tablets don't come cheap. Bought a couple of those. I urgently needed a filing cabinet. Right, so you've got two of these. So I ended up with two of these. And one, and one of these. Yeah. So that's new as well. This is new. <laughs> I'm not sure the shopping list idea helped at all. So, Ebony. Given everything you've just showed me, all the shopping that you've done, have you got a shopping problem? Oh, my God, that's a hard question. I'm only looking for a one-word answer. I don't think I have. No. And even with all the discussions and being aware of everything you're buying, all of that hasn't altered the way you look at your shopping? Not really. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm still doing the same shopping. I'm not not doing the shopping. I'm still... It hasn't got me to a stage where I'm so guilty that I'm actually stopping. The whole point of having a shopping list yeah. is not to make you feel guilty if you buy something that's off the list. It's just to, to see if you yourself can remain focused and aware of yeah. what you are going out to buy yeah. and how easy it is for you to get led astray and come back having spent 200 quid on a new TV. It's not about going and spending, you know, a couple of quid on stain but remover for the, no, for the kids' see, shirts. I don't, see, I think you're wrong. Because at the end of the day, if the whole exercise is that I'm supposed to stick to the mm. list, then it doesn't matter whether it's a spray no, or a TV. No, but you've just proved that yeah, you but find it really it. difficult to stick to the list, whether it's a spray or whether it's a TV well, no, or whether it's I, I've whatever. Done, I've done it. I've gone out with the list. 
Does it give me a buzz? No, because I've just gone in there, I've got what I have to do, and then I've got to go to work. Then I've got to come back, do all the... So there's nothing exciting in my life. I'm not going out partying. I haven't got a partner. Please tell me where is my little bit of escape. Okay. So was that shopping list exercise pointless in your opinion? Yeah, a little bit. You could say if Ebony doesn't have a problem with her shopping, who am I to argue? But it's not just Ebony that her compulsive shopping affects. Knock, knock, guys. You right? How's it going? Not too bad, sir. Can I sit down? Yeah. So, tell me, what do you two think about your mum's shopping? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, too much. She shops so much. What do you think, River? Oh, yeah, it's just, like, crazy. She always, like, goes out and just, like, buys random stuff that she never uses. She just knows she doesn't have the money for it, and if she's not going to use it, what's the point of buying it? It's weird not being able to go to certain places in my own house because there's too many stuff in there. What would change if you were able to get the living room um, sorted and cleared? Just the fact that we would have an actual house instead of a giant, like, storage <laughs> system. I'm determined not to give up on Ebony. It's three weeks since I asked Dean to go cold turkey from his beloved online auctions. I've been thinking about Dean quite a lot since I last saw him and, you know, it seems really sad that, you know, he did so many things and had, you know, all this fame and fortune and now he's a person who would rather stay in and shop online rather than go out with friends or with his wife um, and socialise. And, you know, that sort of turnaround is... It really puts things into perspective. So how have you been since I last saw you? I've kept my promise. Have uh, you? Yes, I have. Although I've had a look, I've been... I'm a sneaky look at, at something that... Uh, a, a Rolls-Royce that I was looking at. Uh, <laughs> Are you being but I didn't get it, it's because Karen said you can't have one, so I didn't uh, bid her anything. But he used to have a Rolls Royce many years ago when I lived in Spain. But I can't afford one anymore, so that's gone. <laughs> it feels like a lot of your shopping is because of memories from the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how I used to live. Dean's made another big step. Not only has he not bought anything new, he's getting rid of much of the stuff he already has. Well, I'm wondering what Karen makes of the new Dean. What's he been like the last three weeks when he's not been going on online shopping? He's been a little bit like a lost boy. Really? Yeah. And after um, you'd been here last time, there were still parcels being delivered ten days later. And it was things he'd forgotten that he'd ordered. But um, he's lost interest. He doesn't even go to the letterbox for the letters now. We've eaten out a lot, so that's been nice. So he's had more time. I think he secretly has realised that he's got a little bit of a problem going on here. Um, and it's opened his eyes quite a lot. Oh, oh wow. Gosh. So much, wow. isn't it? I'm just Can sorting everything out, what we're going to keep and what we're going to take to the car boot. Yeah, okay. so they're all memories, scrapbooks and things, so I'll keep those. <laughs> Dean, international Whoa. cabaret yeah. star. <laughs> That's when I used to do the cruise ships. So you yeah. must miss that life of making records and... Yeah, I miss being on there and, and, you know, in the limelight, if you like. I think there's one thing to save things, but I think it's another thing entirely, being dependent on... Yeah bidding on something and winning it yeah. for that little rush of, yeah. of happiness that yeah. it gives you. And when you get, you know, huge success or you yeah. get recognised yeah. in the street or, you know, you've got fans coming after you, yeah. that must give you that same oh, little does. buzz. it does, yeah. But it must yeah. be on a much larger scale. Yeah. Do you know when <clears> you win a bid, is it like a round of applause? Yeah, I suppose it is really. When, yeah, it's like getting so. that round of applause. Well, I think that's probably what it is. Uh, that little bit of a. That might be what it is why yeah. I do that then. When you say it in that way, yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And like you say, it's just that... What's to stop you going back to this in the, in the future? I don't think I will. Way. But why don't you think you will? I just don't think I will. Do you think I will now? Yeah. Do you? Really? Mm -hmm. I mean... Um, I think it'll just slowly get back. Well, I, I don't think so. I think I can do it. I think, and I've realised now. I really hope Dean can prove Karen wrong, for her sake, just as much as his. In West London, after two weeks without shopping, Dipner's lost no time returning to old habits. Whatever happens with her shopping, no matter how much she shops, she's always going to have a roof over her head. There'll be food on the table. She's going to have a car to drive. So really, she feels that there's nothing to lose. Whereas when I look at it, I see that what she's sacrificing for shopping is actually a future. It's having the life that she really wants. The perfectionist in Dipna rose to the challenge, but she clearly didn't enjoy it. I was a bit depressed on some Why days. You? Yeah, I was a bit down. Um, when I was busy, I was still myself and I was still happy. There were just times when I was moody and a little bit depressed. And I think those times, especially when I was left alone, when I came home from work mm. and no one was here. Think about what you just said. It was when you came home, there was nobody here and you were on your own. Mm. Do you not think that Maybe that comes from loneliness. You know, you're, you're 30 years old and you live at home, which is fine, but you've said that you'd like to get married, you'd like to have a home of your own. Mm. Is the shopping not just standing in the way of you doing those things that you want to do? No, I, I don't think so, because even tomorrow if I did get married, I don't think I would stop shopping completely. It would still be a part of me because, you know, it's something I love to do, but I would never let shopping kind of stand in the way. When I meet Mum, I realise Dipna's shopping covers up a much bigger fear than of being single. Do you think, Shushma, that Dipna will find it hard to adapt to not being with you, time together? I can together? say that with the hand on my heart, that she'll find it difficult. More than the shopping, yeah, leaving sure. me. I mean, leaving the house. Mm. That's what's stopping her from getting mm. married, I think. <laughs> You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Does it upset you? It's almost like nicer to just stay here with mum and dad and not have to mm. really grow up and pay bills and get married and leave the security mm. of home. If I could, I'd give up shopping tomorrow so long as I could stay, you know, with mum and dad forever. It's really interesting because it seems like your main problem is not shopping. It just comes out in shopping. But actually, the underlying thing that's going on is that you don't want to leave home. I can't, like, I can't even think about the day when I have to leave home. Like, I just can't think of it without getting upset. But she has to go one day. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? It's that lovely safe bubble. Yeah, yeah. where I being. feel the safest yeah. and most secure. To begin with, I really thought that her shopping was holding her back and preventing her from moving on with her life. If the day comes when Dipna feels ready to leave home and get married and have a family of her own, and at that point, maybe her shopping will subside because she won't rely on it so much. She won't need it anymore. But I think until that day comes, Dipna will keep shopping because she's clinging on to her childhood. While Dipna seems desperate to keep hold of what's familiar, Ebony wants nothing more than to escape her everyday life. Today, I am here to help Ebony do some clearing. She's overwhelmed by all the different projects that need doing, by the decorating, by the clutter, by the garden. And so she goes out, and when she goes out, 
she ends up shopping and bringing more stuff back to the house. And I think that for a lot of people, and Ebony being one of them, the state of your home quite often reflects the state of your mind. And so I think clearing the decks and making some space will be also really important mentally for her. I've persuaded Ebony to recycle some of her clutter, including some of the many things she's bought and never used. Oh, well, we've got our work cut out for us today, haven't we? Yes, we do. Are you looking forward to this? Yeah, I'm too happy. I'm trying to hold it down. <laughs> Don't hold it down. What do you want to start with? Don't I'll mind, let's, let's, let's just go for it. I don't know, just throw it all away. First piece to go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Happy? I'm so happy right now, I can't stop laughing. See, boys, doesn't this feel much better? Is it nice to have the kids helping? Oh, yeah, but you know, they're only willing because you're here. Are you serious? <laughs> I swear. Chance, is it true your mum said that if I wasn't here, you wouldn't be helping? Yeah. Told you. <laughs> Why wouldn't you help? I get paid for this. No, you don't get paid for it. <laughs> Wow. I think we might need another skip. I know, man. We haven't even gone to the shed yet. We haven't even touched the shed. We've hardly even scratched the surface of the garden. Ebony has put off clearing her shed for several years. I know I've got quite a few baby stuff in there. How long have they been in there since they were babies? No, it wasn't for them, you know, because I'd miscarried um, oh. a couple of them. You know, I started getting the stuff, because you get all excited once three months is up. This is quite a few years back now, a couple of years back, a few years. So I haven't been in there since I put all the girls' clothes in. And I've just bunged them at the back there, and I know there's a cot in there, and baby walkers. And, so there's a lot of baby stuff in there, so it's got to go. I didn't realise that Ebony had had a miscarriage. So going through the shed where she's kept all of the baby stuff is going to be really hard as well. And so you know, it's kind of understandable that she's put it off. And actually going shopping is one way of filling her time and just avoiding doing all these things that are a bit overwhelming, A, to do it on your own, and B, to go back and relive those painful memories. All right, let's get the cot out. At least let's get the cot out. that you are able to what just carry do? on. No, I know, <laughs> and it's amazing. Okay. Just carry on. Oh, it's still all right. Yeah. Can't do it. I thought I'd be able to just, you know, just... But I think I'm going to have to keep that one. Mm. Yeah. You, my <laughs> darling, it. you have got an absolute heart of gold and you're keeping everything going for everybody else. You should be really proud of yourself. I hope Ebony can see the positives of what she's achieved today. That's nuts, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It's like a big brick has been taken off my shoulder. It's, it's really liberating, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Not to have all that stuff hanging around your yeah, neck. Just, yeah, just throw it. Oh, it's But when you look so... at it, do you also partly think, what a waste, because that's all stuff that I've bought? Yeah, it is a waste, but I'm not in a rush to do it again, so. Are you not? No. So it's uh... been a really good exercise in that way. This? has been a good exercise. I don't know about the shopping list, but this is definitely a good exercise. Have you also learnt that there are much greater pleasures in life than of the course. buzz of going shopping? Of course, there is. Of course. So today, it totally beats the buzz of shopping. Totally. 
absolutely, 100%. One day can't change a lifetime of habits, but one day can inspire somebody. You know, for Ebony, today has been way better than any shopping trip. I'm not sure she'll ever resist the lure of a spur of the moment bargain altogether, but at least she knows there are bigger buzzes out there. I'm keen to know if it's the same for Dean in Yorkshire, whether four weeks after I last saw him, he's been able to confound Karen's doubts and stay clear of online auctions. I'm very careful what I buy. I mean, I've not bought anything off from eBay since, since we spoke last. That's progress. Yes, it is, yeah. When we first met, you were quite reluctant to even go out and socialise because was. you had bids I, that were finishing and you I, needed to watch I was to watching and watch everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how has stopping online shopping changed your life? I think it's brought Karen and I closer together. I think we spend a lot more time together. Really? Time that you wouldn't have had. That's right. Yeah, if because you'd been, been shopping on there. So what did Karen say? Well, she said, it's better now. Your computer and everything else is in there. And we sit in there without any, any interruptions that we can communicate more together. And I can honestly say that I'm not addicted anymore, which is great. Amazing. Yeah. I'm in a different place now. I'm really proud of Dean and really happy for Karen. I've learned that for compulsive shoppers, a disorder that masquerades as a harmless pastime can, in reality, be addictive and dangerous. Used to combat underlying unhappiness, it ends up contributing to it. What I've realised is that when people who shop compulsively acknowledge that they've got a problem and begin to understand the reasons why they shop, then there is hope and with the right help they can reclaim their lives. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.